Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This video, we are going to take a stroll down memory lane. I am going to be watching, reacting to one of my first YouTube videos that I made, what I thought about finances. It's actually called How I Saved $100,000 by 25. My secret money saving strategies. So ultimately I'm going to watch it, see what I said, what do I agree with right now, what I've learned that I do differently and give you some insight into if I still agree with what I said that long ago. So without further ado, let's get started. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you all of the financial oh my gosh. I've used so I could save up $100,000. Ah! Okay, I will share with you guys. When I started my YouTube channel, I started with like nothing. Like I very intentionally did not want to buy a camera, did not want to buy anything because I wasn't making anything from it. So I used my iPhone 6, I think it was an iPhone 6S, and then the audio was so bad on my iPhone that I connected my headphones like those wired headphones. I didn't have AirPods back then. And I would use the little like microphone thing and I would hold it outside of the view so that you couldn't see it, but you could still hear me a lot better. Also Oreo's right there and she's really cute. That time during COVID was very difficult, but I really enjoyed spending so much time with my family, with my dog, whom I love. Working you know a what? normal nine to five job. Hey guys, my name is Adrian. Welcome back to my, my channel. So I post videos hard. every Monday this on all things investing and personal long. finance. So if that's something you're interested in, definitely go ahead and click the subscribe button below. I want to preface this by saying that I'm not trying to brag not about how much I've been able to save. I just really want to share what I have learned through this process so that you can go out and do the same thing. I've always been very diligent and extremely cautious with every purchase I've ever made. Made. I rarely ever pay for coffee. I rarely buy new clothes and I always pack my lunch for work. Every little place that I could possibly. I was very like specific about like the small things that I save money in and I feel like that contradicts what I would say now. Like yes, you can save money in the little things if you're spending four dollars on a coffee every day that's gonna add up but I think coffee every now and then is good. Every time Noah and I go on a trip, like we do really enjoy our coffee. Whenever we go on a trip, we usually buy coffee. We don't just make coffee at home because we're not home. Recently over 2.9 billion, with a B, records were stolen from the National Data Record, which offers personal information for employers, private investigators, staffing agencies, and other agencies doing background checks. These were all done by hackers. These stolen records included people's full names, their addresses, their social security numbers, their phone numbers. And this whole thing really hits close to home for me because if you guys have followed my channel for any amount of time, you know I've had family members who have had their identity stolen and it is a lot of work to rebuild your personal identity once it is stolen. It can really affect somebody's financial life, but really it can affect your personal life. It really is an invasion of privacy for someone to steal your identity. And that's why I'm really grateful for today's sponsor, Aura. Aura can identify data brokers that are exposing your personal information and submit opt-out requests on your behalf. These data brokers make a fortune off of selling your personal information, and they sell that information to robocallers, spammers, and others who want to learn more about you and your life. Legally, these brokers are required to remove your information from these lists when you request it, but honestly, they make it really, really difficult to do so, which is why Aura is so great because they do all of the heavy lifting for you. Immediately when I started using Aura, they started removing my personal information from dozens of places, many of which I'd honestly never heard of before and I have no idea how my information got there. Aura is super easy to set up. You don't have to download a bunch of different apps to get things like parental controls, antivirus, VPN, password management, identity theft insurance, and more. And even better, Aura is offering my viewers a two-week completely free trial for you to use. So stop letting other people continue to exploit you and your personal information and go to aura.com slash Adrian Invests to sign up for that two-week free trial. And I'll also link it down in the description bar it's below. always a big saver and that's something that's followed me into my mid-20s. Since I started working a full-time job, my goal has been to one, max out my 401k through 
through my employer and also max out my Roth IRA. So the max you can contribute to a Roth IRA as of right now is $6,000 and the max you can contribute to a 401k is $19,500. This is kind of cute how I talk about my job background. I was in a very different stage of life then. I had been working full time. I was 25 at that point. Um, and it was actually later this year that I quit my job and I went to pursue some other things, some other endeavors that didn't make me quite as much money as more lucrative engineering jobs have. So there was a period of time, about three years, that I didn't have a full-time job. If you guys don't remember, I was, I was pursuing playing golf, more highly competitively and seeing how far I could go in that realm. And I'm very thankful that I was able to do that, take some time off and actually pursue something that I've been thinking about for a very long time and had the financial ability to do so. And I learned so much about myself, about what I enjoy doing, what I actually want to do with my life, what are my life goals. Um, and I got to spend a lot of time with my dad who came with me to a lot of my tournaments. I look back and yes, it was really hard that I took some time away from making money and I had the ability at the time to step away and pursue something that I really loved and I don't regret that at all. So I would say I have maybe a little bit of a different take on that. I'm not so driven, like I do understand that I'm young. I'm 29 right now and that, that I'm not going to be young forever essentially. <laughs> $500. So already right there, if I max both of those out, I'm saving over $25,000 every year. And so if I've done that for three years, that obviously doesn't add up to $100,000. But because I've had that money invested, that money has been growing and growing and working for itself without me even looking at it. And also when I contribute to my 401k through my employer, my employer also matches. So I get even more money towards that. So every month, that's about $1,400 that I don't see at all. all of that money gets taken out before I even get my paycheck so I don't even have the option of spending it. Wow, maxing out my 401k and my Roth IRA, my Roth 401k and my Roth IRA is uh, a little extreme now in my opinion. <laughs> like back then I had, I was only living on my salary. I guess I wasn't paying rent because I was living at home but still. Really one of the main reasons why I'm able to do this is because I keep my housing costs so low. So obviously I can't cut out my housing costs altogether, but I have found a way to severely cut back on my housing costs. I know you can house hack and figure out how to live for free. I just haven't figured out how to do that yet. Maybe one day I will. I live and work outside of the Washington DC area, which is obviously not a cheap place to live. But since I graduated from college, I have not paid more than $500 in rent. Yeah. Yeah, so I talk about my housing. Except for a period of six months where I paid about a thousand dollars in rent and that was definitely a learning experience. The first place I lived in after college was in a room that I shared with somebody else and I lived there for over a year and then and so after that I lived in an apartment and I lived in the master bedroom so I had my own bathroom and I had this huge walk-in closet and it was great. I ended up only being there for six months and it was I realized that one of the biggest ways that you can save money is is cutting back on your biggest expenses so obviously if you're spending like $200 a month on groceries the max you could save on that is $200 and that means you don't buy any groceries at all but if you're spending like a thousand fifteen hundred two thousand dollars on rent then there's more money that you can save from that like it would be easier for me to save $500 by cutting my rent than cutting my groceries or cutting another part of my budget because housing can be so much more expensive I thoroughly agree with that you can save the most amount of money on your largest largest expenses. That's kind of just simple math. Like the largest expenses being your housing. I talk about your car, I think. And then I talked about school, like where you went to school. Simply because those three things can be a lot, a lot of money. Certainly if you're trying to keep up with the Joneses. I will say since we have moved from the DC area to Southern California, actually since I got married, I, even back up, shortly after this video, maybe like a few months later, is when I bought my first home. And it's not like I was saving a ton of money by buying a home. 
At least I was putting some money every month towards the principal, but I'm still paying property taxes. I'm still paying an HOA. I'm still paying insurance. And I lived there for two years by myself before I married Noah and then Noah moved in with me. And then we lived there for a year before we moved to Southern California. And Southern California is just a whole other beast of expensive. We just, we spend a lot in rent right now. We just moved to a new townhome. Our rent is $3,000 and that's just where we're at in life right now. For us, it was some sort of balance between what do we want our life to look like? What do we want our life to feel like? I personally work from home, so I'm home a lot. So I didn't wanna live in like a really, really small apartment. When we first moved here, we lived in a one bedroom apartment and that felt so, 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 so small. This home has felt very homey for us and it's not something that I regret even though it is more expensive for us than I really want to pay. Living in the DC area, DC definitely has a pretty good public transportation system. I try to utilize that as much as I can. It definitely takes longer to take public transportation. I love the DC metro system. It is very well organized. They now have it going out to Dulles. You can take the metro from Dulles all the way into the city. I used to be able to take a train from BWI down to the metro and metro home. We lived pretty close to a metro stop. I love the metro. LA, Southern California does not have anything like the metro. I actually like the longer commute. I can read while I'm on the train. Like driving is not mindless when I'm sitting on a train. I, I think I also value my time a lot more than I did back then. Taking the metro to work for me would take forever and I would calculate how much I was saving back then and I don't know if I would do the same thing now. I can do my own thing, I can read a book, I can do this or that, but when I'm driving, like I have to be focused on driving and if you've ever been in DC and driven during rush hour, like it's literally the worst thing ever and I hate it and I avoid it at all costs. A rush hour in DC is nothing like Southern California. I think I would take DC traffic in a heartbeat any day. But I have found for me to get to work, if I drive, it costs me about $15 each way. That's a lot of money each way. That's literally like part. I did calculate how much I was saving every day because I was taking public transportation. <laughs> Even then, I do still have a car, but I'm definitely not driving like the nicest car on the lot. I'm not looking to trade and get a new car every three years or so. I do love my car. I have a 2013 Acura RDX. It's red. I will drive it until it dies. But when we moved to Southern California, Noah had a Jeep Commander that his dad had given him. It was a 2008 and it didn't have AC that worked and we sold it before we came here because I don't think it would have made it across the country. So for the first six months of us living here, we did not have two cars. We had one car that we shared, which was a whole other beast. And then we ended up buying a 2018 a 2018 Subaru Forester and we paid cash for that so the next thing I want to talk about is education so one of the things obviously in my generation being a millennial is the student debt crisis more people than not that I know who went to college have some sort of student debt that they're in my parents were able to pay for me to go to school I chose to go to a public in-state school which obviously saved them a lot of money and that's what I would suggest anybody do even if I were to be able to go to the most expensive nicest private school I'm a big advocate of the public education education. I studied engineering. I think state schools in general have a pretty good engineering program. There's so many programs that you can do so that when you leave college that education. you're not in debt. More than anything, going to an in-state yes, school will I save you a ton of money. And honestly, if I were to do it again, I would have probably gone to a college for my first year to save even more money big, big and deal. lived at home so that I wouldn't have to pay for housing costs. And then I would have transferred to an in-state college. That would probably have saved me twenty or $25,000. I agree with everything I said. I still stand by it. I think I have at least with my husband now being in grad school full-time and him being able to go for free because he was in the military and now the military is paying for it I think actually he has a lot more anger about student loans than I do neither of us have had student loans but he specifically went into the military so that he could go to school and he 
wouldn't have a student loan. So, but he started and finished most of his undergrad degree while he was still in the military. And now he's in a private Christian school where I'm fairly certain most of his classmates are taking student loans out. And I have some fear for them because I think we've both experienced the freedom from not having loans that we're able to do a lot. We can really have the freedom to do most things that we want because we don't have loans to pay. And so I, I really want everyone to have that freedom. Yeah, I didn't even talk about joining the military in this video. I don't even think I was thinking about that. About the that. next thing I want to talk about are credit cards. And I know this is a touchy subject. I went through all of Dave Ramsey's courses. I taught it one year. I was just like against credit cards. And it wasn't probably until October of 2018 where I finally got a credit card. And it was a USAA credit card. I don't pay the minimum balance. I obviously pay it off every month. But for me, the reason why a credit card was useful was because I obviously wanted the benefit of getting the points and the cash back and the insurance that comes with using a credit card as opposed to a debit card. And so since that was my first card, I've actually since gotten the Chase Sapphire Reserve and I also the American Express Gold. And both of those cards have like amazing benefits. So I've since gotten rid of the Chase Sapphire Reserve and there was actually a good period of time when Noah and I were strictly on debit cards, which we for the most part still are. We still have our USAA credit card, but we pretty much live using our debit card. And I think for me, I just ultimately figured out that the credit card game is not worth my mental energy. I, I think learning about other things financially can get me further, can get me, get us further ahead in our finances. So I just haven't really cared to play the credit card game anymore and figure out the points which I know I love to do back then. <laughs> a few other tips and tricks that, that I have lived by is I'm never trying to keep up with the Joneses. I'm never trying to buy the next new thing. I have figured out that the richest people in the world, you can never tell that they're multimillionaires or billionaires because they're not buying expensive items. They're not buying designer clothes. All of their money is like somewhere tucked away, working for itself and multiplying. I'm never really trying to upgrade anything unless it's absolutely necessary. Like I have an iPhone 6S and right now, I I don't even know what iPhone they're on, the 11 or 12. Like I'm not looking to upgrade my phone because because my phone works and there's nothing wrong with it and I would rather that money be sitting invested in an index fund making money than buy a new phone. My iPhone 6s. Right after Noah and I got married, I ended up taking his old iPhone X 10, whatever, and upgraded that way and that's what I'm still using to this day. But man, was I proud of that iPhone 6s because I liked the headphone jack and I refused to go into the AirPod world. Get ahead of everybody but. else who doesn't have money already saved. So for example, right now we're in the middle of the coronavirus pandemic. So with the credit card that I have, the Chase Sapphire Reserve, one of the things that they did because nobody is traveling right now and it's obviously a travel card is that they are offering five times the points mm -hmm. on grocery purchases and they're giving a max at $1,500 a month. So they're doing that for two months. I could just use that credit card and buy the normal groceries that I could for for the month because I don't spend $1,500 on groceries every month. So what I did on top of buying my groceries was I bought grocery gift cards that added up to $1,500 for each month of May and June. And I'm going to save those gift cards and use them after the promotion has ended. See, I'm trying to play this credit card game. Did Spending that money now gets me more points now, but I can only do that because one, my credit limit on my credit card is high enough for me to do that. And two, I have money saved up so I can pay off those credit card bills so that I can use those gift cards later on. Another thing I want to talk about, even though it's not quite finance related, is to choose your friends wisely. I don't think people really understand how much influence people's friends have on them and the decisions that they make. Mm -hmm. You become an average of the five closest She's people not you wrong. spend time with. So if all of your friends are out wasting all of their money and they're literally just broke and have no money in their bank account, then you're going to end up like that too. If you're around a bunch of people who are always just lifting 
lifting you up, pointing you in the right direction, then you are going to go in the right direction. So I just want to say how important it is to surround yourself with good people and be really cognizant about who you're spending your time with. The biggest takeaway I would want you guys to know is that you can save the most money on the biggest expenses that you have. And one other thing I want to talk about is the importance of giving and giving generously. Whether you're giving to a church or a organization that you feel passionately about, giving generously does more for your own heart than, than it really does for whatever organization that you are giving to. And for me, that's something I've been very passionate about. The only reason I'm able to be as generous as I have been able to be is because I know what my money's doing and I'm in control of it. Obviously, you can't give generously and freely if you don't know what your money is doing. I think this is actually a big deal and something that I've thought a lot, a lot about is giving generously. And I think even Dave Ramsey talks about giving, how giving does something to the heart. Not that I don't disagree with that. I just think something has to happen in the heart before like the action happens, if that makes sense. Like I, I do feel like just the act of doing it isn't going to make my heart grateful or isn't is gonna make my heart generous. I don't feel like giving out of guilt or out of obligation is what God wants. And so giving for us has looked much different in this season of life right now. I'm not saying that's for forever, but there are certain instances and causes that mean something, mean a lot to each of, either one of us or both of us, where we feel like giving is something that we really want to do. And in those cases, we give very generously, but I wouldn't say it's the stereotypical way that I used to talk about. That. I can very much so see I was very focused on the small costs and like I said before I think I value my convenience a lot more um, like I'm willing to spend a little bit more money to get a flight that's at the time that I want and honestly I feel like me talking about living such a bare bones life is a little unrelatable. And I did live like a very bare bones life, especially during COVID. Like I think I've actually had a really difficult time since COVID moving back into a life where it is okay to buy things because for so long, like I was working remotely. I was not buying makeup. I wasn't buying new clothes. I'm slowly working my way out of that. And it's very difficult. <laughs> I'm slowly learning to enjoy my money and the fruits of my labor. <laughs> With all that said, I hope you guys enjoyed taking a little stroll down memory lane. Don't forget to check out Aura. I will put the link down in the description box and in a comment pinned down below. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video and please share it with somebody. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.